The Calve in opening hand, which is not really what we want. Obviously, we don't want Ball in hand or Usurper. This is like where maybe we just end up playing Assassination instead of Remedy because we have so many Mulligan targets for it. Like having a, another Brick in round one is just not ideal. So this might just turn to Assassination, I think. Hey, Anna Henrietta against Overwhelming Hunger. Oof. Sheesh. You can't mulligan Calvate, okay. Kate. Like, we, we want... We would ideally not... You, you can't guarantee it, Kate. Like, this is the whole point. Like, this is if he's at the 25th position. But you can't guarantee it, but mulliganing him is super troll, because then you will never draw him. We just go Tortoise. It's either Tortoise or Diplo. But what I also like about Anna is like a lot of the time with this leader, you might just want to commit it round one anyway. Not against the flipping urn of shadows though, I don't think. Sounds pretty bad. This would be nice if I had some kind of assimilate. I'm enjoying this deck already, man. Again, I think I might turn the Remedy into a uh, assassination. Just for the round one. Manticore's not a real card. Well, I imagine they'll play around our leader on it. But again, we've got the option of using Calvate round one. But it's very risky. <laughs> this is fine, yes. If we get heat waved, it's fine. We're on the coin we're at, guys. This is, I would never do this if I was going first. So, the key question we have to ask ourselves is do we want to play Calvate? I don't think that's true. We've got Enslave, we've got Poisons. I think we, we don't want to play Calvate, right? We want to just Calvate round two. That's going to guarantee us Aristocrats for round three plus ball. Uh, the other question is, do we want to play any of these other cards? And I think the answer again is no, right? But this is why ideally you don't want Calvate in your opening hand. You'd rather draw him into round two, but it's not a big issue if you do. Because it's just very rare you're ever going to play him in round one with this deck. But this is just like, we could just pass on seven, but here we just tried to make some efficient trades. Like we got a Harpy out for like a bunch of our useless tactic cards, right? Again, Usurper we could keep, but I'm pretty sure we Mulligan Usurper every time. Because we need Masquerade Ball plus two tactics. Uh, plus two Aristocrats, which is going to be Ardle. So we could keep the hand, I think. Um, mainly just through fear of hitting Ball. Also, hitting Alder would be bad, right? 
Hands playable. Um, very likely to find a poison here, but even then I've got Vincent plus poison. Obviously, Cutbearer would be Cutbearer would be great. Let me just keep the hand. And look, if they pass, bang, Calvate dry pass. So my thinking is we're gonna steal this Banshee, but we may as well wait until it goes to five, right? They they can't play two Death Wish cards in one turn here. So here we're looking for um, I speak fluently with an accent and fast. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I've uh, been working hard to improve my English skills. It's not been easy. You know. Yeah, they could go Death Laugh, it's fair. It's very true. But you can see Anna just feels very nice here. I guess that's the other concern. That's alright. Hit the Vigo. So I think we just take the C's on the Death Wish card, as opposed to on the Vigo. Guess we just take a Harpy Egg. There's no other Assimilate to develop here. But yeah, maybe the the Vigo play was just bad, right? Because I have an Anna and nothing to copy in terms of Death Wish cards, really. This, is, of course, is a, is a pretty legit invo. Imagine that 8, eight Vigo, man. That would have been pretty nice for us, huh? So we have got Vincent, which we can use on the Vigo. If they, like, play around the poison, right? Or not, as it turns out. So if we take the... If we take the poison, we're at 26. Anna wouldn't quite get us there, right? Which isn't ideal. So I guess I'll just take the Anna first. Anna would get a sec, so I could have just used the leader charge, right? All we need to do is survive this round, man. All we have to do is just survive. Maybe we could have taken that extra mulligan, right? Come back. And I think this Vigo play, like, I, I had to try and find some kind of death wish card, right? 
Imagine like I flip in, was able to wait until the, the other harpy, and then I could have vicoed another harpy rope, for example. But yeah, I just don't want them to play around my... They're just going to eat whatever I poison, otherwise. No Death Wish card, unfortunately. Alp is pretty decent, though. Token from leaders, Vincent target. That's a really good point. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yep, we have two aristocrats left, which are, which are on top of our deck, right? We're top decking these two cards. And ball. And a flipping Arrakis screen. Let's go, mate. Let's go. We have overwhelming hunger carryover from Anna. <laughs> we have Masquerade Ball. We have an Arrakis Queen. I guess we just bin off the Vincent. I don't want to bin off the flipping. I mean, in fairness, Arda was just drawing us a card as well, right? But we have Brathen's Usurper as the top two. It's a Foglet. It's too funny to kick. The Vincent's so good though. Ardle draws us another gold as well, so we don't kick Ardle. I guess we just bin off the Vincent for the Usurper, right? We have nine tactics. There's a good chance they play Heatwave. Um, if it's the if it's a net deck from myself, I know I had Heatwave in this deck. Yeah, we had the luxury to not even, not even worry about the Vincent because of how good our top decks are. And here's where you can see Joachim is still kind of legit situations for sure. Oh my god, I forgot I get to eat with it. Wait, I forgot about that. So I just... Wait, I forgot about that part of it. I thought it was... Aren't I going to get the Foglet as well, guys? Guys, I get the Foglet as well. That's how this card works. Because I know that's how it works with Cyana. Is Dame better or is Usurper better? This isn't an agent. I mean, it's just better to eat the Usurper, right? Is it? Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. It's just a six. This is never going higher. I do have Brathens, which is an agent. <laughs> oh my god. Right. So it's just the fact that it's a, a taller body, basically. Let's go. The Masquerade Ball deck is here, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're obviously going to mulligan ball, we're going to mulligan usurper. And then we just have a luxury mulligan to get rid of the worst card, which I guess is an ointment here. Um. Again, we could turn one of the ointments into emissary. The, the only difference that that would do is it would mean that our Ardle's 8, which means like a TA'd Dunker wouldn't be able to be answered, for example. Not that Dunker's a great example of a card you want to answer, but yeah. So, Tortoise just 
doing really well. Again, we definitely don't want to play Calvate until round two. I was supposed to click. I knew I wanted to click, but I didn't click. It's awkward. Yeah, I can try and open some kegs to get Ardol. Ardol and Calvate premium. Cyclops, eh? So, of course, the concern about going emissary is we just play too much into uh, Manticore. Yo, hey, Mariah, what's up, man? Hope you're well, my friend. Thank you so much for the f seven months with the Prime. I really appreciate it, man. It's good to see you, mate. What do we do here? I, mean, I could just play Tourney Joust. Ointment. I just, I'm scared about playing into Heatwave, and I'm scared about playing into uh, whatever the other thing is. I guess we just take the Joust. What, kicking fangs from the deck? Nah. We've got Cutbearer as well and Vincent. We just haven't drawn the poisons yet. Yet. That's the keyword here, right? Um, I don't massively want to pass, but... I'm still quite scared about playing into Manticore. I would happily play the Emissary, but again, I'm playing too much into Heat Wave, right? I'd only have five points after Heat Wave and I'm playing too much into Maruna. So if I was to go Emissary into this, I'd have 13 points on my side of the board. They'd have 10, 8. We're just done here, right? Similarly, if I was to go Ointment here, and they have a Sunset Wanderers, which is a little bit spooky, mate. I need to share the deck still, yeah. But there's a Harpy Egg, there's a Cyclops in the graveyard, there's a Harpy. It's probably going to be the main thing we look for off of the Remedy. So, we can keep the Usurper because we have Ardol, Vincent, top decks, as long as you don't top deck one of them here, right? Um, it's going to be Ball. So, we have Ball, Ardol, Wrath, and Vincent, which is four. It's fine. We can take a Mulligan. We just have to hope that we don't hit one of the Aristocrats. card is pretty bad, but this is a soldier at least. Banos. Good to see you, mate. This is definitely a card we're interested in. But I have to eat. Calvert is going too tall. Sorso is going too tall. I don't want to remedy an egg, guys, because I can remedy the harpy, right? I can remedy the harpy, get bonded. And then Anna gets value. So I'm thinking I maybe just 
take the poison here. Sets up assimilate. Okay. So this is a bit of a bit of a commitment, right? Let me just play the battle prep. So we might regret this play, looking back. But this pass just oh, oh, oh. I feel like we fancy our chances with Calvay having just gone down, right? Maybe a fangs was just safer, but I was trying to develop my engines. But I think we don't care too much about the pass here. Emissary's the kick. We're hitting what? Vincent Vigo, so we take both mulligans. Do we kick the poison? Do we keep the poison? Ardle's gonna draw us a card as well. Um The Remedy maybe goes over the fangs, I think. We don't have any poisons here. I think we keep it, right, Vincent? Uh, maybe the fangs just goes, right, actually. The question is, do we start with a proactive Masquerade Ball? I think the answer is yes, right? It just gets heat waved and then we go Usurper. Again, Ardo at the moment is just drawing us fours, but we're going to invo something, right? He's like our Joachim. So the only real option here is, I think, just ball, right? It gets heat waved. It might not because they play Sunset Wanderers. And we just go Usurper. Like we miss out on a little bit of Assimilate value, but Vigo can play Agents, Brathon's play is an Agent. What? Wait, what? Huh. Excuse me. Uh. Okay. The question is, are we interested in like stealing it? We also need to work out what our actual play is going to be here, right? Yeah, we can enslave it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess we just go enslave plus remedy, maybe. It's not really that good for them either. It's probably enough points to be worth it. We don't play locks as tortoise, yeah. There's also just an option to just go for a harpy egg, but if they play a harpy now, it's good for us, right? Why did the dame get buffed? Um, you get a uh, what's it called? Words are hard. Yeah, spying. So obviously Anna's now an option. Comes the haunt. Is there any reason not to play the Vincent now? Um, bear in mind Vincent can hit these as well, so there's not really a risk in having to Vincent straight away, right? This may be why we should have just kept the fangs as well. Because Vincent's always enabled. Uh, I don't really want to Brathens this anyway. Consume that is because we have two consumes of Anna. Then we just play Anna, right? 
You have our undivided attention. Ardle 9, so we can't do anything with that. I mean, we can obviously give them this, but we want to invo something still, right, before we play Ardle. They eat the operative. I suppose at this point we can just play the Vincent. Shouldn't be getting significantly better. It might get a little better, but frees up our hand space. You'll notice I don't have many premiums in this deck, guys. I'm not a big Masquerade ball gamer. <laughs> Usually it's been my least favourite deck, but it's been a while, I'm enjoying it a lot. I guess it's just time for the Brathens. Um... I don't want to play Ardo into our Invo, right? He's Ardo 9. So the question is, do we go for the Bargeist? Which is a point more if I don't play any Deathwish cards. Um, I'd probably take the Banshee, right? I don't care about the extra consume. Then again, this dies to a bomb. Bargeist doesn't. I don't think I care about the extra consume though, really. Extra point I might care about. Is it dies to a bomb? Maybe I should have just taken Bar Ghost. This remedy looking quite like quite a bad decision. We invo the Toad Prince. Why Toad Prince? Because we're going to draw it ourselves. If we, we invo the Toad Prince. I mean, it's not playing for many points right now, is it? But I'd also rather just hit one of my own than a Bar Ghost, right? So I guess it's just Ardle time. The North must be destroyed. Ugh. I mean, at least it kills what they play, right? It's like a fair trade. So I played for seven. Plus eight. Still pretty good. That's pretty depressing that we lost. It was close though, right? We lost by what? Not many points at all. I could have played better, right? Um, the So how could we win this? The Vico, for example? Yeah, they did play really well. If if the if with the novice I didn't go for a harpy. Yeah, the remedy. I always call it Vicar still. If I went for a remedy on a harpy egg, that's what? A lot more points. Um, Enslave on Maddock. Not sure was great. 
I think also if I kept the poison. And also if I just don't... Like, Tony Giles is like pretty much the worst, right? Tony Giles played as a... 5. Being safe was good. Yeah, the, I think the leader was probably worth it, right? Okay. Going first. Don't really like battle prep as a card. Penny Just is good. Fangs is a bit awkward, but it's going to be good in round two. Fangs is nice. We just have a luxury mulligan. Probably. Diplo. Gonna keep it. I don't want to hit ball. I do not want to hit masquerade ball. Is there a world? It doesn't, unfortunately, because we need Devotion for Usurper. Yeah, I think Devotion is really important. Why are we playing Calvate? It's not that good. Thanks. It's very, 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 very good in this deck. We've built the deck around him. We play Calvate in round two, and then it guarantees us Masquerade Ball plus two Aristocrats. So if we can not get too owed, we should win. Most of the time. Obviously, if they heat wave your board, like in the last game, it becomes not as clear cut. Definitely need to be respectful for this, so I guess we just go Vigo here. It's not an ideal find. I was looking for the emissary, right? Uh, the informant, but rather. Boy, trust no one. Never have. I guess it's just a remedy. Should be better on average. Got a random card for a deck with special boost by three. <gasps> it's quite a lot of specials, guys. We've got to go for it, right? Believe in the power of the Farseer! Oh! <laughs> Let's go. But yeah, this is why I'm, I'm quite worried about Sasuke as a card. This can't answer it, right? And against like non no unit decks, that is quite a scary uh quite a scary thought. We do have the option of going enslave here on this card. Kinda like it, mate. I'm going to just try and win the round, guys. Screw it! Oh! Oh! Wait, really? They just left it there? Bloop. See ya, dude. I guess maybe Anna was better. Probably was the turn of the Anna, wasn't it? Yeah, I should have. Mistakes were in fact made. Oh god. Should I stack the front row? Of humans and dwarfs. But yeah, this is the thing with Sasuke, right? Card is just pretty obnoxious, mate, to be honest. Good thing that I don't have a. Uh...
the hell do I do? This is where I really could do with attorney gels. But yeah, obviously I misplayed. Okay guys, I think we're losing. They're just slamming unlimited provisions, it seems. Saskia is so obnoxious, man. I think Squirtel is the faction that I just am most worried about. Like, this whole, like, player card that wins you round one and you can't contest it is... pretty alarming. So we go double fangs, it's worth 13. I mean, we could maybe trade fangs for something better, right? Feeling a bit feckish. Still have leader, they pass. Yeah, I work for the queen. Better than working for you. We're down two cards, but I'm going to have a juiced up hand. I don't, it's not traps either, right? But I say that. Shouldn't be traps. We might actually be okay here. Oh, heat waves a problem for us. So at the moment, Ard will give us Remedy. Is there a world in which I'm supposed to do anything with this card before I play ball? Nah, right? If they Heat Wave, it slows them down for a turn and I get an engine. No heat wave, guys. Okay, so because they have no heat wave, now I just need to start developing my assimilate engines, right? I could also poison this first with cupbearer. I go cupbearer poison. Purify is also an option. Is that really worth it though? I mean, I have two poisons, so this the poison's not doing much. Yeah, it's definitely an option to purify. Is that really what I want to do now, though? Gets my assimilate engine down. It does also just leave theirs open, though. The alright, chat. Alright, I see. Double engine development in one turn. Oh! The return of the cup bearer, mate. They have no Milva, don't forget. Style. That's right. Now I think it's time to get Ardor on the sentry, right? So they can just move it to the back row. <laughs> Maybe it's actually better to just... Uh... I mean, we don't actually care about the sentry that much, though, right? If we're going to answer other stuff. So Usurper is triggered by Brathens twice. He's triggered by use of one, so if we're prioritizing, this is a better prioritizer. This is more points for it. Okay, 
Because this... Our broth get triggered by ball, that's true. So is it the same? Why not Ardle Sentry? Because I want to invo the Gezras and get that. I think. And I can just Ardle these. Because if I Ardle it, they just get it back, right? Whereas these are just gaining points. So I think I'm supposed to Brothens now, right? Your name, young man, man should be cursed into an earth. Her grace will not be pleased. I guess this is worse into their leader. I don't know, maybe I've not played it correctly. I think I was supposed to go for a Cat Witcher instead, right? So I'm getting a Remedy here. Is there anything I'd rather Invo? I need to save the Invo, right, for Gezra's. Which they surely play. Yeah, this was a this was an incorrect play, right? It's just supposed to be Cat Witcher. No point in showing mercy. No point at all. Are you fucking kidding me? Catnip instead of crowns? Mm, a highly curious case. I guess it's just the informant, right? It's an agent, it's a spying tag. Um, Cowbitcher plays as a guaranteed seven. Calvate is a smurf in this deck, man. Calvate is a smurf card, man. More guerrilla tactics. Ardle can go. Vincent can probably go too. Honestly, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he's good to keep. I think Ointment's pretty good here. I think the Jousts are pretty good. Not sure about double ointment. It's probably better to just play into the front row, right? Because the cat witches in round one. It's not like we're gonna play. Oh Jesus! So this is gonna be some sort of trap stack. I don't know why you would play this card though over Saskia, because this also is gonna thin your Ayla in, right? Which you would rather have. Carry over on, in my opinion. What's the play here then? Uh, it's been good. We won two, lost one, and the one game we lost was by like three points, and I think I could have played it better. My opponent played also really well. Ardle would be completely broken at that many provisions. Ardle's really good. I guess it kind of just has to be Emissary. Mm, a superb specimen. True. We want this to get damaged through it. Bowman only puts it to four. We want it to get damaged to make an ointment to, for the value, mate. Oh, 
Ardul's really easy to um, misevaluate how much he's worth. Because it's important to realize uh, the break that Ardul draws you a card and your opponent does not draw a card. So he's like a dandelion poet with a seven body that also resets the card that you put back in their hand. So even if you don't reset, get any reset value, he's still not even that bad. And also in this deck, he's an aristocrat, which is very relevant. Very relevant. Right. Wasn't very smooth, was it? Wasn't that smooth. The question is if we just accept losing on even or not. I think that would be a serious error, right? We have to try and win the round. You will not regret this, sir. Everyone has their secrets. Everyone. And she makes your opponent draw a win con. You don't draw. They don't draw a card. Still probably winning that game. Should just be a really bad matchup for us. Resistance shall not be tolerated. Okay, uprising. This is maybe a matchup we actually have to pull just in round two. Anna's so good in this matchup. Let's just kick the aristocrats, man. We've got a nice hand to contest round one here. Maybe I could have just kept Vincent, though, for Immortals. I might regret mulliganing Vincent, right? We'll see. Um, this card is not that much of a threat for us because I can poison it later. Or I could poison it now even, right? And then just steal the... Eyes closed, mouth Torturer. Open. We have a really solid round one here, even without Vincent. I maybe should have kept it still. I, I, I feel like I definitely should have kept it. My loyalty is to Imperial coin. This is just going to be about contesting round one really hard, right? Otherwise, we just get bled. Uh, this is actually a Calvate round one win round one de uh, matchup. But these can obviously still just get value on the adepts. I mean, the good news is we've got Tourney Jaws. They can lead to them, though. They're pretty big brain. Guys, what's the drama? Like, 
Let's just not be like, guys, there's no need to be like disrespectful to each other. There's no need for that. But um, Ardle's definitely a really good card. I, I misevaluate cards a lot and misread cards, but this card is just really good, right? Like, all you have to look at this card, ignore all the text going on. All you have to realize with this card is you draw a card your opponent does not. It synergizes with Invo as well. Like, we're not using Yoakim. So we are planning on Invoing our opponent's card and then Ardul to draw it, right? Your opponent does not draw a card. Deck is doing really well. We're what? Three and one, I think. The wonders of projectiles and range weapons. We're devotion, so. It's a lot of points we've got without even using the uh, the Vigo here. To try and find the poison. It'll be sad if we miss it. It's not guaranteed. 66%. Last words. I was going to say. Am I interested in going mentor? Not really, right? There's so many cards I wouldn't want to find her. Not all dragons crave gold. Don't have any witches. But I do. This is just playing as a six. I mean, we just need points, mate. Ride me, to ride me. Yo! Yo, Sam, one love, mate. Easy oh, with the five month sub. The answer, Thank you so much, my friend. Guys, we can use Radovid against them. Right? We can actually... If we could have invoked Radovid, or if we get somehow managed to... If we can enslave it, right? So we have Anna. Like, Anna's such a smurf against Uprising. Are they going to slam jam the leader here? Wow. You are not this, but, uh, Thank God for that. Uh, do we, do we lead her? It's just a value play. How many points is their leader here? Their leader's worth three, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Pretty sure we need her. And we should take a card off the row with more units, right? Mm, a superb specimen. That should be enough to stop them winning it. Radovid probably gets there still, but they have to use both leaders. I doubt there's anything else that does it. Probably, probably was still worth it, right? Otherwise, they would have had a leader carryover. Like, I don't know, man. They have witches worth very few points. We just been off the board, right? No, I'm on it. Tell me 
specific. But yeah, they are just going to be destroy her. So. Scary. Ardle's going to draw me another card which gets bled. It's going to be Vincent, which isn't as good as Usurper. And it just gives us more value off Keldar. We also know they have a four tempo play in hand. Okay. We do still have one aristocrat. So if we can just top deck ball, we win. But this is again an example of why you don't want to actually necessarily calvate round one, and calvate round two is the superior calvate, right? So Anna's guaranteed. Can we find the ball? Can we find the masquerade ball, guys? Scytheman's kind of good, right? Ah! Anna will carry, guys. She's so good in this matchup. So because of Leo, is this worth it? Not really. This is just time for Anna, right? Are we taking a Scytheman here? Is there anything better to take? This is worth seven. Is Scytheman worth more than seven? Yes. This is correct. Dark clouds gather over to Maria. No, the defensive. Much better at that. My prescription. A bit of blood setting. I guess there was an argument to actually take the Griffin Witcher and just back row it, right? Because it gives us. It would have played for. Eight on Leo, but then also my Scytheman would have played for my other Scytheman would have played for more. Would it have played for one more? No, because I wouldn't have been able to boost all the cards. So it was, this is fine. This is just correct. Can't see it getting any better. So I could have got extra points if I self tourney jousted her. I think we beat Leo, right? Should be their best guard. He's not 11 points. Let's go! I should have done maths on Scytheman as well, right? Because I could have denied a boost. Let's go! Woohoo! We missed the ball. Anna just completely smurfing on Uprising. So this is like the really cool thing about Anna as well. This is a big reason that Freddy had it in his... um. Masters lineup is like part of the plan of the lineup was to be good into uprising. Yeah, Everton Chelsea on Wednesday night, mate. But we're certainly gonna be playing Gwent for at least, you know, the usual amount of time. Which is like three more two two and a half more hours, two hours. But I think I'm gonna just mess my old man and say I'll sort myself out for dinner. So obviously the Mulligans here is just gonna be Masquerade Born Usurper. So far Calvite's been in all our opening hands. Do I watch F1? No, but I did watch the final a little bit. I missed the start and the end. I watched a bit in the middle. <laughs> oh, have they, done, have they actually redrawn it? I heard that they, they might have to. I heard that they might have to. Might have to. Yeah, exactly. I missed the good parts. So, we've got double tortoise. These cards are feeling great. They have done it again. So is it not is it not no longer Ronaldo versus Messi? Is that what you're telling me? 
no, dwarves do not qualify for childcare. Are you telling me it's not Ronaldo versus Messi anymore? PSG Real. Who did Real have before? Yeah, because basically they they drew, they drew um, United against Villarreal, which meant they couldn't because they're in the group. So they had to put United into a different pot, but they forgot to. Real had Benfica. Oof. Ouch. So the question is, like, how much are we supposed to commit in round one? Because it's definitely nice to apply some pressure, I think. I feel like we could probably get away with applying quite a lot of pressure here with this hand. I have a bunch of assimilate triggers. Your name, young man, the man should be cursed into an stick my nose where it doesn't belong. I have enslave. I think I'm just gonna try and win. The problem is I'm gonna apply so much pressure I might accidentally win on even. We, we need to make sure we play Calvate as well. Time. But I've just gone for the win on even approach. Maybe I'm overdoing the winning on even approach though, right? By committing Broth and San Vigo. Knees are drowning in shite, but the head's in the clouds. Onward, sons of Nirvgaard! So positioning on the peaches, guys, in case you're not familiar, is really important. Because the tax collectors go first. Meaning that the horde on the peaches is just sticking here. So they're, they're committing. Which does just mean we can continue to go for more engines. I did slow down for a turn to play Calvate, right? I don't even think I have to win on even, I just think I have to win the round. Now we've got this out as well, right? I don't think there's any Purify Bronze cards. We are getting close to over-profiting. Damage an enemy unit by three. Is that good? I'd like to get a spender here, right? But we could also invoking a beggars because we do get ahead. It's just I'm over profiting. No spend again, man. The good news is I can keep in both. Uh, Badly play right. Three hundred thousand now. Do we have four? The shame I have. My whole winning on even approach hasn't gone too well, right? No spender. I have a 14 point invo. I'm 19 down. It's fine, right? Maybe just invo on the Jax was the play here, though. Can I invo Jax? I actually can, right? It's exactly enough. Let's go. Uh, I'm just getting two. It's a 12 point play. Oh, ho, 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 ho. okay. 
So we just go to the long round with Masquerade Ball, Ardor, Usurper. <laughs> We've played Brathens, Vincent, Anna, <laughs> Jax, Coin Carryover, Anna Henrietta. Okay. That's not going to be a bad hand. <laughs> Cut Bear is op an option off Ardor as well. This is going to transform as well. Man, this deck is so damn fun. Holy moly. I'm, I'll share this list afterwards. I'm really happy with it. Again, it still could be an assassination over the remedy. The fact we're devotion and we've got a jackpot leader now as well. In fairness, imagine if we had Anna Henrietta in that round one. Our tax collectors would have still been ticking. That would have been sick. Oh, this video is going to get so many views, mate. They belong to me, and me alone. So, of course, we could idle this. It's also just going to be a nice poison target for us. Um, we don't know that they're devotion, in fairness. They haven't played Royal Decree or anything like that, have they? Oh, they play Heatwave. It's just going to be a nice poison target. Oh, <laughs> the Enslave Masquerade Ball, man. Ball was boring for a long time, but now... It's changed, mate. This is it's, it's, it's a redemption arc. So, while we would like to go Usurper first, it also is just going to get answered, right? So you could play Anna first, they don't have much spenders, but I think... We could Ardle this now, poison this. Don't really like that. Let's just slam points, we can't lose, mate. We just can't lose. Vincent is actually looking rather dodgy. But we have Cutbearer on top of the deck. No, mate. Armor does not count as a status. It has to be like this little bit down here, right? Guys, we can Ardor the Siggy. Isn't that broken? Ardle ship? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like it. I want the cup bear in hand. You no chance. Do you not see that? Thinking can be hazardous to your health. <laughs> Anna's playing as a what twelve? Let's go. Cupbearer is feeling great too. That one extra poison with Vincent combo. Look at the deck. Just so perfectly polarized, mate. Like, this is how you play Calvate, guys. Look at that. This is how you flip and play Calvate. This is the only thing that's bad, right? Wasting a provision. I mean, maybe poisoning this was dumb. In fairness. And then we just have all these uninteractive points, man. We play Anna, and then suddenly, bang. This can't be touched. Let's go, man. The ideal lies ahead. 
shit. I like that. GG, man. So if we didn't have the invo on Jax, might have been more of a struggle, right? We probably would have had to have invoked King of Beggars instead, honestly, because we needed a spender. Having said, hmm, might have been a struggle, right? We would have had a seven point lead up. We would have only wasted, what, two coins in fairness? Because we could have just used our leader to boost. No, we was, no. No, that's nonsense. We'd have nine points less. King of Beggars isn't good. It's a four point card. Jax is what, a 12? So we have eight, coin, eight points less, probably, right? Would we have had eight points less? No, we've only had... Yeah. So we'd have lost. I also think I could have played it more cleanly, though. Like, this uh, poison on the horse almost was done, right? Four points? No, isn't it eight points? Because Jax is a 12-point card, right? The tribute's four. Yeah, but it's profit four as well, right? It's a 12-point card. The tribute's four, right? It's profit four, tribute four. Damn it. Like, the tribute doesn't change, bro. Round on round. I am pretty sure. Okay, Calvate and opening hand again. We can mulligan the Ardor for sure. Last time we slammed a bunch of points round one. Uh, we have the Anna as well, which is, I think, a really nice round one card to play. In fairness, we still have a bunch. We don't necessarily have to bin off the Ardor, right? We could keep him. The tribute doesn't change, I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's always tribute four. In fact, yeah, it definitely is, right? It has to be. Because otherwise you'd get plus six of King of Beggars. I mean, I can just look. Yeah, tribute so is four, yeah. Roland. That's quite scary, mate, considering I've got all these poison cards. So last time we went for the approach of just slam jamming to win on even, I don't think, or just winning the round, right? I don't think we're going to take the same approach when my man's got Roland. The fact this card is out is really promising, to be completely honest. The question is, do we play tortoises or do we play the Diplos? The other thing to consider is that they're probably going to play Gela and poison a bunch of stuff. <laughs> we can't enslave him. I'm going to save five. Let me just play another tortoise, mate. But if they go Gela and poison all their stuff, mate. <laughs> oh my god, this could be brilliant. And we're going to find more poisons off the Diplos, right? I'm feeling confident I might just Calvate now. Yeah, they have no idea we have a handful of poisons. <laughs> they have no idea. Here it comes, guys! No! What the hell? Eavesdrop? Why did they not play the card, man? Why did they play Roland? I'm 
so confused, mate. Alright. We just passed through it. We're only at five coin carryover. I don't know why they played this card. This is a really good hand. What if we assume they still have Gellert? It's so weird, right? Why would you open this? That is a saucy backer indeed. Bane, your pizza has got about seven minutes left by my calculation. Don't forget about it. Pretty nice draws. Brothens would have been good. Invo. Like we get, we're definitely in danger of getting too old, no doubt about it. Also, if we do Ardle, we certainly would prefer to Ardle before. Calvate. But I'm just going to play Calvate now, I guess. Not sure this is correct. This might have been a better play, like, in a turn, right? But also, if they, if they then decide to push us, we just slam in Slave, right? Like, I actually think Enslave is great in this deck. Spessy Pizza. Jesus, man. <laughs> Yo, Kren. Premium grade won't find any better. The senses can be easily. Just so this is what we do now in round two. And they're past the six card mark. Get that enslave value. Like enslave's so good here, man. Again, Alden unfortunately gives us ball, which is pretty bad. Really bad. So this Calvate play, I'm not sold on being correct. I could have just opened Vigo and said that my poisons are just good in round three, anyways. It's not even a commit. And yeah, this is the other thing. We already play Anna, so Enslave is just a leader ability. You're happy to commit early. They just rage quit? They just don't want it? Alright. Kind of smurfing, guys. Look at that. 